you know, I've really come to enjoy the books and the videos that a lot of the content creators on YouTube make. And, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed the fact that some people share the biggest takeaways from the books that they, that they read. For the last, you know, five years, I've been really big on the personal and professional development world. And I think one of the books that I attribute my success to and, and my, you know, commitment to my own development is definitely The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. You know, this book was the beginning of my personal development uh, journey. This is a book that was recommended to me by my now fiance, Brian Martin. And, uh, you know, I'm just very thankful for the fact that she shared this book with me. You know, this is a book that um, I was recommended back in 2014. And uh, I remember getting to the airport and for whatever reason, I found the book on in the, in the bookstore, right? I bought the book and on my flight from California back to Houston, uh, I read the whole thing. And so it's definitely a quick book. Uh, there's a lot of context, a lot of perspective that this book shares on you know how you should live your life and the way you should live with others and i think one of the biggest takeaways is that the fact that we are domesticated and we are indoctrined uh, to believe certain things in our lives because that's what our parents told us because that's what our friends told us and sometimes we fail to realize that they were also told and indoctrinated and, and domesticated for lack for the i guess that's the terminology that he uses in the book and we just you know we do things because we were told to do things like that way and uh, we really never make the decision on ourselves to say this is the way I want to live. We just live because it's the way people tell us to live. And so the four agreements goes into, you know, the four main principles, right? Which is one of them, or the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. The second one is don't take anything personally. The third one is don't make assumptions. And the last one is always do your best. And so, you know, the book kind of wraps up with this, with the idea of breaking old agreements and uh, heaven on earth. And so, you know, from, from the macro you know the biggest takeaway is finding love and finding not necessarily love with other people and relationships but finding love with yourself and finding love with the commitment to that you have with your life with the idea of wanting to do better every single day um, i think sometimes people you know they, they hear these these agreements and they take them for face value and it's important to do that but there's just so much more context associated with it with the agreements um, so i'll kind of share a little bit about you know the takeaways that i have uh, be impeccable with your word you know, again, I think some people take that as, you know, don't lie. And, and I think the idea here is is that, but also be impeccable with your word in the sense of if you said you were going to do something, do it. Uh, but also that the power that your words have, um, you know, positive self-talk is a huge, you know, conversation piece right now in the, in the personal development space. And I think people say, be kind to yourself. And that's kind of the idea here is being impeccable with your word. The words that you use against yourself have so much power. And so he uses the, the, the terminology black magic uh, in, in this book. And he says, you know, the negative self-talk that we have is this magic that we use against us. And it really puts us back in our space where we just don't feel comfortable with who we are. We don't feel comfortable wanting to be better. And I think the idea of being impeccable with your word, even with yourself and your own thoughts, is huge because if you're so, so negative with yourself, how are, how are you expecting others to love you if you can't even love yourself? And I know it's easier said than done, but again, that's kind of the big takeaway for me uh, on the first agreement here. Um, the other one is like, this is the words that you use, right? Before I move on to the next one, you know, there's a story in here talking about a mother who comes home and she's upset, she has a headache, and she's just having a rough day. And uh, her daughter's being a, a kid, and she's enjoying herself, and she's la laughing and, and dancing, and just making a big noise, a lot of noise, and she's singing. And the mom tells her, you know, shut up, you don't even, you don't even know how to sing. Uh, your voice isn't nice. And uh, the girl stops, and she moves on about her, about her life, and years pass. And the mom, you know, starts to think, you know, why did my daughter change so much? And she really never thinks about too much of it. But the thing is, though she domesticated her daughter to believe that she had a bad voice, that she her voice wasn't worth singing. And uh, this girl became to be a shy woman who did not speak for herself, all because of that one instance. And again, you know, some people might say, well, that's a bunch of woo-woo, but, you know, it's important because when you become domesticated and you start to believe these negative self-talk uh, and these negative self, uh, these words are so negative, you really become to believe it um, that maybe it is the truth, right? And so it's important, you know, not just the words I use with yourself, but the words you use with others. The second agreement is don't take anything personal. I think that one was a big one for me when I read this book. You, you assume that, that people know you. And when you think things personal, 
uh, you fail to realize that people are just projecting their own insecurities, that people are just, you know, being the ugly person that they want to be, and it has nothing to do with you. And so when you don't take anything personal, it allows you to find some type of personal freedom where you don't give other people so much power to put chains around you. Uh, when you don't take things personal, you realize that it doesn't matter what other people say because those, those are their their own uh, thoughts, their own opinions. And, you know, Les Brown shares this quote now in this book, but don't let someone else's idea of you become your reality. And I'm paraphrasing there, but the idea here is, again, don't allow other people's, you know, word to become and take power over you. The third one is don't make any assumptions. Uh, Sometimes we make the negative assumptions or the the wrong assumptions. And we fail to realize that um, it's just not the way it works, right? You assume that someone's trying to be ugly with you. You assume that somebody understands what's really going on. Um, and that just takes you the wrong path. And I think when you start making all of these assumptions, you know, you start to realize that you don't you don't know what's going on. Uh, you don't know if someone is having a, a rough day. And so it's important to really figure out what you're trying to get out of everything. Um, you know, there's a line in here that says, because we are afraid to ask for clarification, we make assumptions and believe we are right about the assumptions. Then we defend our assumptions and try to make someone else wrong. And I think that's the biggest lie we can do to ourselves. You know, we fail to communicate clearly. We fail to communicate uh, with intention. And I think when we make all these assumptions, you know, it just takes us the wrong path because you end up stacking lie on lie on lie because that's not the, really the intention was from the beginning. And so again, takeaway there is, is don't make assumptions. And then the last one here is always do your best. Uh, I think a big one for me was, you know, the idea of I, I'm doing everything I can. The important part is not comparing yourself to others. Um, I think that was a big takeaway for me was always do your best work. And the always doing your best work means doing your best work, not trying to mimic somebody else who is five years ahead of you, uh, somebody who's 20 years ahead of you, yet even somebody who's a year ahead of you. You know, the only way you can be better and the only way you can do your best work is to try to be better than you were yesterday. Uh, and I think that's the biggest takeaway, right? Because if you can focus on finding progress every single day in your own life, you know, by the end of the year, you're going to have exponential growth but if you only focus on trying to mimic somebody else well you really don't know if you're moving in the right direction because you could be moving in the right direction in one specific area of your life but are you really growing bigger and better as an individual in your own personal life and i think the answer is the only way you can do that is by really understanding who you were yesterday and trying to be better than that so i really encourage you all to take a look at this book it's a quick read maybe three hours or so uh, but it, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a very beginner book in the sense of personal and professional development. It, it's easy to read. It's easy to understand. Uh, it has really good examples. And I think some people may say, well, I just don't believe in those type of books. Um, I know what I need to do and I'm doing it. But I think it's books are just, they provide so much context. They provide the mentors and coaches that we don't have in our lives. And so a, a big takeaway here is just, you know, find the wisdom that this book has. Uh, if, if you don't, you know, what are you really doing uh, with, with your life in the sense of, are you finding new opportunities? And so if, if you don't have the time to read the book, uh, maybe find out on Audible, maybe find a summary on Blinklist. Thank you all for watching the video. I hope you are able to take something away from this video. And if you guys have any questions on the book, please let me know. There's also, I'm um, gonna add a link in the description on the podcast episode that I did with, in the Dealing With Life Stuff podcast that I host. Uh, we went a little bit deeper with my co-host on the specific book. And if you want to hear, hear a little bit more about it, uh, please check that, that link out. And uh, without further ado, thank you all for checking out the video and uh, drop a like.